headlines. NLC threatens indefinite strike over fuel subsidy removal. Bochi civil servants explore secondary income sources to augment earnings. National Emergency Management Agency issues flood alert in 13 states, 50 communities. And away from Nigeria, Tuareg rebels claim control of northern Mali town after weeks of fighting. Hello and welcome to Trust TV News Update. I'm Aisha Salihu. Thanks for joining us. We'll begin with labor matters where a week after its two-day nationwide warning strike, the organized labor has threatened to begin an indefinite strike if the federal government fails to meet its demands. The Nigerian Labor Congress has given a 21-day ultimatum which will expire in a week's time. The workers' union said the proposed strike was necessary following the failure of the federal government to provide palliatives to assault the Nigerians' hardships because of the fuel subsidy removal. The Nigeria Labor Congress and the Industrial Action said the industrial action which may commence any day from next week would lead to an indefinite shutdown of commercial and economic activities across the country. NLC Assistant General Secretary of the NLC, Christopher Onyeka, told the punch that the federal government was wrong to share a bag of rice to a dozen citizens while reportedly giving 100 million naira palliative to each member of the National Assembly. Among other demands, the NLC and the Trade Union Congress were asking for wage awards, implementation of palliatives, tax exemptions and allowances to the public sector workers and a review of the minimum wage. Though the federal government made a commitment to restructure the framework for engagement with organized labor and palliatives, the eight-week time frame set for the conclusion of the process expired in August with no action taken. Civil servants in Bauchi have emphasized the need for public workers to find secondary sources of income in order to survive the rising cost of living in Nigeria. They, they were speaking to Trustivis at Amo Imam on the need to diversify revenue sources to sustain their living cost following the current economic pressure on Nigerians in the country. The report. For some public servants in Bauchi state, the Nigerian economy and its uncertainties place a huge burden on public worker not to only be productive in their workplaces, but also think outside the revenue of the services to survive the economic upheaval that dots the Nigerian landscape. Whether you like it or not, you have to look for plan B. You must go to do the work as normal, and at the same time you have to look for uh, another way to acquire money, just to sustain your life. People are living uh, from hand to mouth, are eating from hand to mouth, because uh, the economy of the country generally have sent a very wrong signals, in which uh, people, a lot of house, uh, houses are spent, usually used to spend days without having food on their table. One has to devise a means of any livelihood. The salary is not yet coming, some that is even coming, it's not sufficient for them because the cost of materials have increased. So there's, therefore, as, as a worker or a public servant, you need to have a means that you can be able to survive. Surviving means you have to drive another way of source of income. They encourage others to think beyond white-collar jobs, which are growing leaner with every passing day. Adding that to survive the present economy, one needs to have multiple income sources. If you are hungry, how will you, how will you even discharge your primary responsibility in the office? You can't do it. It's not even possible. So I'm even advising my, 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 my fellow civil servant to look for a plan B, to look for another side business. Necessity is the father of invention. So once uh, you are into something that you believe it is necessity for your life, you have to invent, you have to be creative. 
You have to be innovative. You have to create so many ways to ensure that you sustain your livelihood. They, however, advise Nigerian youths to pursue education and venture into business because life nowadays, they insisted, is meaningless without business. Adami Imam, Trust TV News, Bauchi. Now, residents of Zangon Kabukawa, a community in Batagarawa, local government area of Kasana State, want the state government to come to their rescue through provision of basic social amenities. Abdullahi Yamadi visits the community less than a kilometer from Batagarawa town to speak to the residents on life challenges. The report. This is the only access road leading to Zangon Kabukawa village, which since the return of democracy in 1999 has been without basic social amenities. The situation leaves the residents stagnated. For instance, the community has been without school, clean water, health care facility, electricity and other basic necessities despite their closeness to Batagarawa town, the local government headquarters, and the state capital, Kazina. These residents at least need a primary school for their children, access road to transport farm produce, and water for animals and domestic purposes for now. Zangon Kabukawa has a population of over 5,000 people and is without even a school. As you can see, we have to send our children to Batagarawa Primary School. Our greatest challenge is this stream, which often prevents our children from attending when it rains. This overhead tank has been there without a functional borehole. An attempt to provide the village with water has not seen the light of the day. How do we get here, despite our numerous challenges? Anyway, you are welcome. Please help us to tell Governor Duko Umaru Rada to come to our rescue. He is our last hope. The residents believe democracy has failed to change their fortunes for the better after decades of sufferings. Abdullahi Ismay Amadi, Trust Television News, Kazana. Now to security matters. A 40-year-old man, Ibrahim Omar, has been arrested for allegedly killing two casual workers in Taranka village in Gamawa local government area of Bochi State for ritual purpose. The suspect, a resident of Dankunkuru village in Ungogo local government area of Kano State, was suspected to have come to the said Taranka village for charcoal business, and in the course of his stay, the two persons weren't missing. Residents of the village were said to have suspected Umar of being responsible for their disappearance. The police public relations officer, Bauchi State Command, Ahmed Wakil, disclosed this in a statement made available to journalists on Tuesday. Wakil said the suspect was promptly arrested by the police operatives when they received the report of the incident. He warned the people of the state to disease from posting unverified stories on social media, which could cause chaos in the society, assuring that justice would take its course. And now her husband, Surajuddin Olashinde, has narrated how his wife, Ms. Tura, and his two daughters, Hawa and Fatima, were kidnapped around Galadima district of the Federal Capital Territory. Olashinde, a staff member of the Nigerian Nuclear Regulatory Authority, said the incident occurred last Friday, September 8, when his wife and the children were driving home in their Toyota Highlander from Garuki to Starwood Estate, where they reside. He said residents of the area quickly called the divisional police station at Galadimawa. Immediately, the news got to them, and the DPO, Jerry Cole, led a team of his officers to comb the bushes in collaboration with men of the vigilante. Olashinde, who arrived in Abuja on Saturday, said their captors called his brother-in-law to demand a hundred million naira ransom. According to him, 
when we told them that we didn't have much money, they asked us about the Toyota Highlander and we told them that it was part of what we sold out to raise the money we planned to give them. And I'm away from that, the National Emergency Management Agency says 13 states and 50 communities, mainly up north, are likely to witness heavy rainfall that may lead to flooding between September 13 and 17. The Lagos Territorial Coordinator of NEMA, Ibrahim Farin Loye, disclosed this in a statement on Wednesday in Lagos. Farin Loye listed the states that would likely be affected by the flood to include Kano, Kebi, Kasina, Niger, Kwara, Adamawa, Yobe, Gombe, and Jigawa. Farin Loye added that due to the rise in the water levels of rivers Bainwe and Niger, communities along the two rivers up to Bayelsa were advised to take precautionary measures in the coming days. Authorities of the Obafemi Awolowo University, Leife, in Oshun State, have increased tuition fees in the institution for the 2023-2024 academic section. The decision to increase the fees was taken by the Senate of the University at its emergency meeting on Tuesday, 12 September 2023. Previously, returning students paid between 19,000 Naira and 31,000 Naira, while freshers paid between 70,000 Naira and 100,000 Naira, depending on their faculties. But according to the newly approved fees, newly admitted students into the faculties of arts and law and humanities would pay 151,200 naira, while returning students of the same faculties will pay 89,200 naira. For those in the faculties of technology and science, the new students would pay 163,200 naira, while returning students of the same faculties are to pay 101,200 naira. New students admitted into the College of Health Sciences and the Faculty of Pharmacy are to pay 190,000 naira, 90,200 naira, beg your pardon, while returning students would pay 128,200 naira. The Public Relations Officer of the University, Abiodu Nolari Waju, while confirming the development, said the new fees are just for an academic session. The Delta state government has outlined the procedure it would adopt in the distribution of palliatives to its citizens to cushion the effects of petrol subsidy removal by the federal government. Secretary to the state government and chairman, State Subsidy Palliative Committee, Kingsley Emu, at a news conference in Asaba, revealed that the state would adopt a distribution model of 40% to 500 Delta state independent electoral commission words. Words in the state with 10% res reserved to show up or ban words. He further said that 25% would be distributed to heavily impacted people, consistent persons living with disabilities and widows, while 20% will be for poor and vulnerable households and 5% left for contingency for the local government areas. According to the SSG, every local government would receive 696 bags of 50 kilogram rice, while maize would also be distributed to poultry farmers across the state. What we have done after His Excellency appointed this, the steering committee that I have announced here, we sat down and looked at uh, the distribution of what we have. I think it's about uh, 17,400 bags of rice. Uh, so far, we have received 13,800. We still have a shortfall. We well, haven't said that we can commence distribution in some areas because we, are, we have a good authority that they will pay. They will, they will deliver those bags of rice, uh, ba the balanced bags of rice to, to us. We've also been informed that there's also about 16,500 uh, trucks, uh, bags of uh, maize that will get to us pretty soon. I hope, I hope I'm correct with that figure. We'll get to us pretty soon. You're watching the news update on Trust TV, coming up shortly. We'll take a look at the changing phase of Asaba Town with solid waste. Details of this story, more to come after the break. Don't go away, we'll be right back.
Welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is a news update on Trust TV. Now let's take a look at a recap of some of our major stories. We told you that NLC threatens indefinite strike over fuel subsidy removal. And Bauchi civil servants explore secondary income sources to augment earnings. Now to more news, travelers plying the benin onisha Wari Expressway have decried the bad condition of the roads in Edo State. The roads remain perpetually in deplorable condition with attendant implications on the economy and the well-being of the people. Hamida Yegbade, who was in Benin, files in this report. The traffic gridlock became unbearable as vehicles plying the Beni Onisha Wari Expressway were granted to a halt, leaving travelers to groan. The travelers lamented that they wasted several hours in the traffic, which disrupted their journey and thwarted their plans. They also said that the bad condition of the road exposed people to serious security risks, especially at night. So if you're, some people will sometimes will spend three days here, sometimes four days. As you can see now, there's no, there's no road. There's no way you can go. So it's a very annoying situation in the country. Very, very annoying. See our road. See Johnny, where are they go? This morning, Johnny was supposed to take me two hours, 30 minutes. Now it's almost six hours. The six hours, I don't hang for road. My motor don't think for photo photo. I beg. As I talk out like this, uh, I must talk and the way it takes me for me, you don't hide me. I beg federal government, the road is bad. People, they spend two, uh, two hours, four hours. Some people, some motor, they destroy. The road is not good. They need to come out and look for what is happening. Because sometimes we spend five hours here at a spot. We can't go anywhere. At the end of the day, sometimes we spend a night, we spend a day here. So at least let the federal government come out and help us. We need the help. Let the counselor, let the chairman, let them go out and tell them what is happening. Let them come here and see how people are suffering. For a whole day, you spend five, six hours at a spot. It's not fair. Let the federal government and let the state government also come out to do something. I believe with them. We can be free. Sometimes they rob us on this road. Some residents lamented that the bad condition of the intrastate roads in Edo State is making life difficult for them and wanted this addressed. Amid Ojiegbade, Trust TV News. Asaba, the Delta State Capital, is experiencing the indiscriminate dumping of refuse on popular Nebisi Road. Jonathan Anwaya reports that the trend is now becoming a source of worry for residents. Take a look. Nebisi, a major road in Asaba, is no longer a good site. The road has suddenly become a refuse dump of some sort, with bags of refuse now a common sight. It is a situation that has become a source of worry for some residents who now worry that the practice could cause an epidemic if not addressed immediately. So with the way we did thing, then I not make sense. And uh, if this thing, if they don't take any action between now and weekend, I think as a bag of dirty. That's the thing where they are now. The dirty no good because as they are now, the environment is very dirty and it's smelly everywhere. Put this things in place. Bring measures so that whatever that throws calm or any debt outside it should be fine for it on the part of government it is not for lack of thoughtfulness but the permanent secretary of the ministry of environment dr mini osaji says that government and the waste evacuators are having some challenges foremost it started with residents who did not have subscription with the private set of participants so rather than paying between 1,005 and 2,005 so that the private sector participants can come and cut away their refuse, they chose to come out in the night and go and dump it. She however suggests ways residents can mitigate the situation in the meantime. So before I dump my waste and keep it for the private sector participants responsible for cutting away my own household waste, I first remove all the plastic bottles and I recycle the plastic bottles. We have a number of plastic uh, recycling companies. I also remove paper, I remove cartons, and all those things, you open a packet of uh, cereal, I remove it. So I pack all those things and I store them, and when they have um, reached a sizable quantity, I take them to the integrated waste management facility. And there, 
I put it and they actually give me remuneration. So the question now is how do I get every resident in Asaba to do this while we are trying to deal with the problem of ensuring the dump site is function. It is expected that the eyesore is not allowed to linger in the interest of the people's health as cleanliness is said to be next to godliness. Jonathan Awanye, Trust TV News, Asaba. And now away from Nigeria, Tuareg rebels in northern Mali say they have seized control of a military camp and posts in the town of Borem after weeks of fighting against the National Army and Wagner mercenaries, threatening to unravel a 2015 peace deal. Tuesday's capture of Borem, situated between the ancient cities of Gao and Timbuktu by the Tuareg rebel alliance called the coordination of Azawad movements, comes as a military consolidated power in two coups in 2020 and 2021. And kicked out French forces and United Nations peacekeeping mission MINUSMA. CMA spokesperson Mohamed El Mouloud Ramadan said there had been casualties, but that he did not yet know the death toll. Mali's army spokesperson did not immediately respond to a request for comment. The region has seen a resurgence of tension in recent weeks, triggered in part by the pullout of UN peacekeeping troops, which helped in maintaining a fragile peace. Still on the foreign scene, the International Organization for Immigration on Wednesday said disastrous flooding in Libya has left more than 30,000 people homeless. The figures referred to the particularly hard hit port city of Derna alone, the UN organization said. Thousands more have lost their homes and cities in the east of the country after two dams broke in eastern Libya near Derna, sweeping entire neighborhoods into the sea. Some 10,000 people were missing and according to the administration in the east of the country, more than 5,000 people have died. The IAM has estimated 2,000 were killed and at least 5,000 are missing. And finally, in sports news, Nigeria's Desire Oparanose has announced her retirement from the Super Falcons and club football. The player made the announcement on her verified social pages on Wednesday. Desire started her career with the Super Falcons in 2010 with 35 caps and 22 goals. She has been to four FIFA Women's World Cup, namely 2011, 2015, 2019 and 2023 World Cup in Australia and New Zealand. Her last outing for the Super Falcons was the 2023 FIFA World Cup round of 16 exit to England where she lost a penalty kick. And with that, we've come to the end of the news update at this hour. Do not forget to follow us across all of our social media platforms. Join our YouTube live stream for more news, documentary and program. I'm Aisha Salihu. Thanks for your time.